Hello, my name is Sarah Cervantes Pam, and today I would like to share with you some of the results of our project entitled Evaluation of In Vitro Procedures to Predict the Digestible Energy, abbreviated as DE, in Yellow Dead Corn. As a background, out of the 600 glass corn samples that the company have, we were able to obtain 50 corn samples from Pioneer Hybrid International Incorporated, a seed company based in Iowa. These 50 corn samples were chosen to provide variability to the database. And the variability was based on chemical characteristics, the concentration of DE, and the apparent total tract digestibility, abbreviated as ATTD, of GE or gross energy in yellow dead corn. This table shows some of the chemical characteristics of the corn samples. Among the chemical characteristics that were analyzed, the concentration of crude fat and NDF have the greatest coefficient of variation. From the table, we see that the average concentration of crude fat is 4.5% with a range of 3.11 to 7.57% with a coefficient of variation of 30.16%. We could also see that the average concentration of NDF is 2.66%, ranging between 1.09 to 7.56% with a coefficient of variation of 55.16%. Based on this table, we could also see that despite the high coefficient operation of crude fat and NDF, the concentration of GE, DE, and the in vivo ATTD of GE was not very wide, where we see that the mean or the average GE among the 50 corn samples was 4,513 kilocalories per kilogram dry matter with a range between 4,410 and 4,720 kilocalories per kilogram dry matter with a coefficient of variation of only 1.78%. Likewise, we would see for the DE that the average DE of the 50 quart samples was 4,040 kilocalories, ranging between 3,777 and 4,267 kilocalories per kilogram dry matter and the CV was only at 2.6%. In vivo ATTD of GE for the 50 corn samples average 89.52% with a range of 85.12 to 92.32% with a CV of only 1.68%. These small variations in DE and ATTD of GE tells us that we need a procedure that is sufficiently sensitive to detect the small differences in the concentration of DE or the ATTD in these corn samples. So to go to our objectives, the first objective of this experiment was to evaluate in vitro procedures and techniques that would correlate in vitro dry matter disappearance with the concentration of DE in these 50 corn samples. The second objective of the experiment was to develop a regression equation that can predict the concentration of DE in corn. And the third objective was to evaluate the suitability of the DAISY-2 incubator as an alternative to the traditional water bath. And this is the picture of the DAISY incubator that we used for this experiment. For this experiment, we considered the Boisset and Fernandez procedure as the standard procedure, and this procedure was published in 1997. The Boysen and Fernandez procedure is a three-step in vitro procedure that simulates the digestion processes in vivo. Step one, made use of pepsin to simulate gastric digestion, and in this procedure, pepsin was added at 25 milligrams per mil, and the samples were incubated for two hours. Step two, made use of pancreatin, to simulate small intestinal digestion. And pancreatin was added at 100 milligrams and the samples were incubated for four hours. For step three, viscosine was added 
at 5 mL and viscosine was added to simulate hindgut fermentation and the samples were incubated for 18 hours. So in total, using this procedure, the incubation period consisted of 24 hours. We obtained in vitro dry matter disappearance values for all of the 50 corn samples using this procedure and as you can see, the relationship between in vitro dry matter disappearance and the DE of the 50 corn samples was not very good because we only got an R-square of 0 0.12. Therefore, we decided to conduct additional experiments to come up with in vitro procedures that would correlate well with the concentration of DE in corn. These experiments that we did include looking at the effect of sample size on in vitro dry matter disappearance. We look at sample size ranging from 0.5 grams to 3.5 grams. We also looked at the effect of the type of incubation on in vitro dry matter disappearance. And we compare the daisy incubator with the water bath. We also looked at the effect of length of incubation on in vitro dry matter disappearance. And lastly, we evaluated the three in vitro procedures to determine the best in vitro procedure for our purpose. The three in vitro procedures that we evaluated were the Boisette and Fernandez procedure published in 1997, the procedure of Wang and others published in 2003, and we also modified the Boisette and Fernandez procedure. These three procedures have some similarities and some differences. All of these procedures are three-step procedures and they use the same enzyme in the first two steps in the procedure. However, whereas the Boysen and Fernandez procedure requires the use of pepsin or the inclusion of pepsin at 25 milligrams and the samples are incubated for two hours, the procedure of Wang and others includes pepsin at only 10 milligrams per mil, but the samples are incubated for six hours. Likewise, Whereas Boisette and Fernandez only includes 100 milligrams of pancreatine and only incubates the samples for four hours, the procedure of Wang and others in 2003 requires an 18-hour incubation of the samples and pancreatine is only added at 50 milligrams per mil. On the third step of the procedure, Boisette and Fernandez uses viscosine to simulate hindgut fermentation and viscosine is added at five mils and the samples are incubated for 18 hours. Whereas for the procedure of Wong and others, for the last step of the procedures, they make use of cellulase and they add cellulase at 20 mils and the samples are incubated for 24 hours. So in total, the Boisette and Fernandez procedure incubates the samples for 24 hours, whereas the procedure of Wong and others incubates the samples for 48 hours. This is the basis for the study on the effect of length of incubation later on. For the third procedure, we basically modified the Boisette and Fernandez procedure only on the third step of the procedure, where instead of adding viscosine, we added the fecal inoculum. Now let's look at the results. This graph shows the effect of sample size on in vitro dry matter disappearance and in vitro gross energy disappearance abbreviated as IVGED. In the x-axis, you see the sample weight, which range between 0.5 to 3.5 grams, and on the y-axis, you see the in vitro dry matter digestibility or in vitro dry matter disappearance. The blue line on top represents in vitro gross energy disappearance using the DAISY incubator, and the red line on top represents in vitro dry matter disappearance using the DAISY incubator. The last two lines at the bottom uses the water bath, and the green line represents in vitro dry matter disappearance, and the orange line represents in vitro gross energy disappearance. And you will see immediately that we see a quadratic reduction in in vitro dry matter disappearance and in vitro gross energy disappearance when we increase the sample weight from 0.5 to 3.5 grams. And this observation is true for both types of incubator, whether we use the daisy incubator or the water bath. This graph tells us 
that we could not increase the sample weight to more than 0.5 grams. This graph presents the effect of type of incubation and length of incubation on in vitro dry matter disappearance. The first two bars on your left represents in vitro dry matter disappearance using the water bath, and the two bars on your right represents in vitro dry matter disappearance using the DAISY incubator. The blue bar represents short incubation, which is the 24-hour incubation, and the yellow bar represents the long incubation, which is the 48-hour incubation. And in this procedure, we all used the viscoside. First, we could see that regardless of the type of incubation, the in vitro dry matter disappearance of samples incubated for the long period, or the 48 hours, has greater in vitro dry matter disappearance than corn samples that was incubated for a short time or for 24 hours. Second, we could also observe a type and length interaction. And we could see this if we look at the difference between the in vitro dry matter disappearance of corn samples incubated for a short and long period using the water bath, which was twofold greater than the difference in in vitro dry matter disappearance of corn samples incubated for the same period using the DAISY incubator. Third, we could also see that the in vitro dry matter disappearance of corn samples incubated using the water bath for a long period is not different from the in vitro dry matter disappearance of corn samples that was incubated for a long period using the DAISY incubator. This table shows the regression equations to predict the concentration of DE derived from in vitro dry matter disappearance. On the first column is the type of incubator and that is the water bath or the DAISY incubator. The second column you would see the length of incubation which is the short incubation or 24 hour incubation or the long incubation which is the 48 hour incubation. In the third column you would see the regression equations. On the fourth column you would see the R square or the relationship between in vitro dry matter disappearance and DE of the corn samples. And on the last column, you would see the p-value. As we could see on this table, whether we use the water bath or the DAISY incubator, we observe that increasing the length of incubation improves the R-square of the regression equation. And here, using the water bath, we could see that for the short incubation, R-square is only at 0 0.03. However, when we increased the incubation time to 48 hours, the R square improved to 0 0.4 with a p value of 0 0.13. In the same way, we observe that for the short incubation, the R square using the DAISY incubator is only at 0 0.11. However, when we increase the incubation time to 48 hours from 24 hours, we also improve the R square to 0 0.72 with a p value of 0 0.02. Because we obtained a better R-square between in vitro dry matter disappearance and the concentration of DE in the corn samples when we incubate the samples for a long time using the DAISY incubator, we decided to use the DAISY incubator for our next experiment. This table presents the regression equations to predict the DE in corn using in vitro dry matter disappearance from three in vitro procedures. As mentioned previously, the three in vitro procedures that were evaluated were the use of viscoside, the use of cellulase, and the use of the fecal inoculum, which you could find in the first column of this table. The second column shows the length of incubation, that's the short or the long incubation. The third column shows the regression equations derived from these in vitro procedures. The fourth column shows the R-square, and the last column, the p-value. And once again, we see the same pattern as was observed in the previous experiment where when we increase the incubation time from 24 to 48 hours, we observe an improvement in the R-square and this is true for viscosine and cellulase. In viscosine, we see that for the short incubation, R-square was only at 0 0.1, but when we increased the incubation time from 24 to 48 hours, R-square improved from 0.1 to 0.53%, and we have a p-value of 0.06. In the same way, cellulase for the short incubation 
only provided an R square of 0 0.06, but when we increase the incubation time from 24 to 48 hours, we see an improvement in the R square from 0 0.06 to 0 0.41 with a p value of 0 0.12. However, the improvement in the R square when we increased incubation time from short to long was not observed when we used the fecal inoculum. Based on these results, we were able to come up with a final in vitro procedure. The final in vitro procedure makes use of 0.5 grams of sample, requires a long incubation time, which is a 48-hour incubation time, requires the use of a DC incubator, and we basically followed the Boysen and Fernandez procedure. And based on this final in vitro procedure, we were able to come up with a regression equation as presented that is able to explain 53% of the variability in the DE in these corn samples. So based on this final in vitro procedure, we obtained the in vitro gymatric disappearance of 28 corn samples, which we used to build a regression model. We also included some chemical characteristics of the corn samples to improve the regression model. So the final regression model to predict the DE in the corn samples includes five components. And those five components are in vitro dry matter disappearance, NDF, gross energy, starch, and corn density. And with the addition of the chemical characteristics, we were able to improve the R square of the regression equation from the original 0 0.53 to 0 0.81 with a p-value of 0 0.001. But in order for us to know if we could use this regression equation to other corn samples which was not included in building the model, we decided to validate this regression equation by obtaining 10 corn samples that were independent of the 28 corn samples that we used for model building. So we determined the in vitro dry matter disappearance of these corn samples using the final in vitro procedure and fed the in vitro dry matter disappearance values as well as the physical and chemical characteristics of the 10 corn samples into the model to come up with the predicted DE. This graph shows the relationship between in vivo DE in the x-axis and the predicted DE in the y-axis. As you could see, some of the red dots, which represented the corn samples, were on the line and some were quite far from the line. But in general, we were able to obtain an R-square of 0 0.72. The slope of the line is also not different from zero. And we validated the regression model by using the mean square prediction of error, which looks at the difference between the in vivo DE and the predicted DE. The mean square prediction of error is equal to 0 0.007, and you could see that in the upper right hand. And the mean square prediction of error of 0 0.007 is less than three times the mean square error of the regression equation. This tells us that we were able to come up with a regression model that is able to predict the DE in corn with reasonable accuracy. In conclusion, an in vitro procedure was established that was able to explain 53% of the variability in DE in corn. And this procedure makes use of the DAISY incubator, requires a 48 hour incubation period, and makes use of the Boysen and Fernandez procedure that was published in 1997. And in this experiment, a validated prediction equation that determined the DE in corn with reasonable accuracy was developed. Thank you for your attention. If you are interested with more nutrition facts, please visit our website, which is found at the address on your screen.